solutions architect at AWS. Uh, what that means is I get to work with really cool uh, startups in uh, San Francisco and help them grow uh, and be successful on AWS. So uh, one, one of the areas that I love is uh, you know, data and data processing. And um, you know, in the process, I was uh, uh, you know, thinking about like, getting cool graphs and numbers uh, about you know, the existence of big data. But I think it's, it's about time that we accept that big data exists and focus on how do we solve uh, and how do we derive meaning uh, from the data that we have. So traditionally, uh, we have seen um, you know, MapReduce uh, you know, has been uh, one of the answers uh, to solving this problem. How many of you are actually familiar with MapReduce here? I think there's a fair, uh, fair bunch of uh, people. I'll just walk through really quickly what MapReduce is. So uh, it's a paradigm where um, you have uh, two entities, uh, Map and Reduce. So let's say I wanted to count the number of words that exist uh, uh, in a corpus, in a bunch of documents. So what my Map function will do is identify all the words, uh, say all the nouns, um, uh, you know, so identify what's a noun, and every time I found a uh, noun, I would map it to um, you know, the count, and then uh, at the final stage, we'll actually reduce this by taking all the map counts that we have from all the documents into a single aggregate. So that's what essentially map produces. So what this does is, uh, uh, as you can see, uh, if you caught the pattern, uh, it's highly parallelizable. So you can have uh, a bunch of uh, you know, processes actually acting on it and um, you know, produce the result. Now let's you know, walk through a quick guide on you know, how one of the most popular frameworks is Hadoop. Uh, so you know, here's a quick start guide. But wait, uh, you know, before that, let's you know, get familiar with uh, you know, uh, some terminology here. Uh, name node, data node, resource manager, yarn, et cetera. Nah, I'm just kidding. There's too many things here. <laughs> uh, the whole point is, how do we simplify this? How do we simplify the workflow for uh, a developer or uh, somebody who's not very familiar with infrastructure or uh, a data scientist? So, um, you know, uh, just like pretty much everybody here, I've, uh, uh, I've an obsession with serverless. Uh, so the idea here was, how do you make this simpler from a developer perspective? How do you give them the power to actually do uh, you know, processing uh, serverless. So, so serverless uh, MapReduce. So it's two components, uh, and um, what I did is uh, we came up with a framework uh, that just uses a, a Lambda and S3 and completely processes uh, your uh, you know, set of keys that are in S3 serverless. So let's, uh, I'm going to walk you through how the workflow looks like. So uh, the first uh, step is uh, there's a driver function. Uh, and you know, the driver function can either be a Lambda function by itself, or it could be on your laptop. Uh, what the driver function uh, takes is a config file uh, where uh, you give it the location uh, for the mapper uh, function and the reduce function and a configuration file like this is the set of keys or regex that you need to operate on. And uh, the second comes the map phase, where uh, each of these keys that you have <coughs> in your S3 bucket now um, you know, get, um, get a, each, uh, it gets a batch of these files, and they execute on the mapper. And they actually write their output to S3 as well. So all your intermediate map outputs, so all your mapped outputs are then written to S3. Um, but you know, just like any system, as you see, there's a disconnect, right? There's a map and a reduce. Uh, so you need something to coordinate uh, between mappers and reducers. So, uh, so here comes the uh, coordinator, and which is uh, the part here. Uh, and this, again, is a lambda function. So the coordinator is a lambda function that subscribes to S3 as an event source. And what it does is it listens to, uh, OK, uh, here. You know, uh, here are the mapper outputs that are done, and it is going to coordinate the next steps. So let's say uh, we have all the mappers uh, that have finished. Now it's uh, now we enter into the reduce step. So the reduce step, um, 
So the coordinator um, uh, basically invokes the function, the reducer writes it, and uh, finally the output is also written to uh, S3. Now, um, so one of the things here is, uh, you know, your reducer, you could have, uh, you know, say thousands of files where uh, th there might be one reducer may not be enough. So, so what the coordinator does is it actually will recursively spin up more reducers. So uh, n number of steps until we get a final single reducer that can produce a unified output. And I'll walk through a, a problem as well. So, um, so let's let's take a, a function. Uh, let's take an example. So this is a, um, a benchmark. This is a query taken from AmpLab, which is uh, which has benchmarks on various different uh, big data processing. And uh, the, there's a data schema here, which is essentially a CSV file that has source IP, destination URL, and ad revenue, uh, and a bunch of other fields as well. Uh, but we are only interested in aggregating the revenue per IP. Uh, for um, this data set that we, uh, this query that we're going to run. So the data set essentially has uh, 25 gigs of uh, uh, 25 gigs worth of data and uh, 155 million individual rows. So the SQL query looks something like this. Okay. A bit of middle and <coughs> okay. So uh, before we invoke the, so this is the JSON config that looks like. So you specify a bucket, uh, and this bucket could be anywhere. Uh, I, in this case, I'm using a bucket that's uh, public. This is a public data set, uh, publicly available. Uh, and I'm using a job bucket that I've created uh, in my account. Uh, you can specify the memory for your uh, mapper and reducer functions. Uh, and then you essentially specify um, uh, the uh, mapper reducer um, and the coordinator, which uh, you don't necessarily need to modify when you write your own custom query. Um, so, and concurrent lambdas, uh, I'm sticking with the uh, 100, which is the soft limit. Uh, but if you have bigger workloads, of course, you can uh, raise that limit. So, I'm going to execute the code, uh, and we're going to time this as well. Um, and as you can see here, uh, the zip file's been created. Uh, there have been three Lambda functions that have been created here. Um, so uh, the mapper, the reducer, and the coordinator, and the uh, event source is linked. So right now we have 29, let's see here, we have 29 mappers uh, that, that, that have been spawned for this 25 uh, uh, gig data set. So let's take a quick look at what the mapper function looks like. Uh, as you can see, one of the mapper just finished. Uh, so um, it's, it's actually just taking seven is the number of files that was mapped, uh, the number of lines, and the time taken by each of the mapper. So, uh, so we have about uh, half of the mappers already finishing. And, and you can see uh, most of them roughly take the same amount of time. Uh, but uh, just like in any framework, you know, that can be something that uh, is a little slower than the other. Uh, so all the mappers are finished, and now we're just checking to see uh, the job is done. Uh, this needn't be, uh, I've just implemented it this way for the demo so that we actually wait and see what's happening. Uh, but you can completely have the driver function as a lambda function and asynchronously invoke uh, because all the data, the result is ultimately going to be written in S3. So you can think of, you can actually add an SNS notification, get an email that your job is done, or a text message, uh, whatever you choose to. So we'll take a look at the mapper function here. Um, so, um, so if you look at the handler, so the Lambda handler, essentially, uh, the first is just uh, parsing the JSON. and um, that's just my logic. My logic is basically split the line. That's the IP, uh, and I'm I'm doing a reduce uh, in my mapper itself bec uh, in this function just because to optimize, um, and just because I have like more than one file in the same uh, mapper. Um, so, and then this output is written to S3, and uh, 
you know, I just write a little bit of uh, metadata so that you know, it's useful to debug and see how much memory is consumed. And we have our job actually finish. Um, so uh, the reducer function looks similar, uh, but um, it's simpler. As you can see, the handler, we, we actually iterate through all the, uh, all the keys. And then um, you load. Uh, so this is the only, literally, these are the only two code points that you would need to change. Uh, the rest of the stuff uh, can st uh, stay mostly the same, except the driver function, of course, where uh, you, know, you might have to change a little bit uh, uh, to map your keys uh, and specify the bucket. Uh, other than that, uh, everything uh, should be the same. And as we can see, uh, it took, uh, it took about, you know, I, I actually poll at smaller intervals. Um, so it took roughly close to two minutes uh, here. And total lines, as you can see, about 155 million rows. Uh, and yeah, the, the cost is uh, less than, uh, just around three cents. Uh, so 25 gigs of data for that. Uh, and it also gives you, the framework also gives you a breakdown uh, because the cost involved here is the total time you spend uh, executing the Lambda functions and then uh, the S3 key access because you're writing through S3 uh, uh, and getting, so you get charged a very minuscule amount. Also, you get charged for S3 uh, for the storage for whatever brief amount uh, you have as well. <coughs> okay. Uh, so, so the summary, uh, the cool thing here is, uh, you know, there's zero setup time, right? So for ad hoc query analysis, uh, you, you can just change the code. You can iterate over your map and reduce functions. Uh, you get to pay per query now. now. Exactly, you have a good idea how much you're going to pay per query. So from a budgeting standpoint of view, uh, or, uh, uh, you know, you, you, or you don't need to necessarily have servers again. <laughs> uh, so this query, uh, I mean, the cost, uh, as we saw, was close to um, you know, three cents, uh, executed you know, around that time, uh, two minutes. Uh, so yeah. Uh, so uh, you know, how does it compare to, um, um, you know, say, other uh, services like Hadoop? So uh, I actually spun a cluster and uh, you know, ran the same query. Uh, so on a, about six M3 uh, larges, it actually took longer. Um, than the time it actually took. Um, so, so one of the things is, uh, you know, how does this actually uh, transform in the real world, um, right? So, um, to actually like get somebody. So, uh, one of the cases was uh, Twin Prime uh, is, a, is a customer I work with, uh, who, uh, who does, uh, so they do mobile uh, performance. Um, so they actually. Uh, do app acceleration. So they have a lot of data on how, uh, say, you know, 4G LTE and other networks actually work. So their use case was um, they wanted to compute the average download speed per customer. So they have uh, a lot of data where they're storing the raw logs as BSON in S3. Uh, but it was just um, their problem was, OK, we just need to do some ad hoc analysis and you know, try and get some information. But how do we actually, uh, you know, process without uh, without spinning clusters or managing? Uh, we just want that data. So it's it's a very common use case for startups where um, either they don't have uh, the depth, uh, the infrastructure depth uh, in frameworks, or uh, they just, from a cost perspective, it, it's inhibitive uh, for them to run these analysis, uh, you know, ad hoc analysis. So. Um, so they, uh, they actually processed about 3,000 keys, uh, uh, and again, using the same limits. Uh, so 201 gigabytes of data that they had, um, 281 million records, uh, BSON data. Again, again, they had a long, uh, um, each line was uh, you know, uh, bigger. And it cost them 39 cents uh, to process this data set. Uh, so I, I think, the, the takeaway here is, um, you know, th this is a this is a framework that, uh, you know, allows you uh, allows the developer to be flexible, uh, and even you as a data scientist who understands the data but doesn't understand uh, the um, you know other frameworks, it's it's really easy to start 
um, and, and do your analysis. So uh, this is available on GitHub as of today. Uh, please feel free to clone. Um, you know, send me uh, send me feature requests. <laughs> Uh, I have a to-do list. It's available in Node.js and uh, Python. So, it's, uh, so the, this is available in both the languages. Uh, I intend to keep the Python support more up to date. Uh, and you know, please, uh, please feel free to um, you know, clone, uh, tweet, let me know. Uh, I'll, be, uh, I'll be available for questions uh, as well. And um, thank you. <laughs>